Hello everyone and welcome to the start of a brand new long form series coming how to make a JRPG. So what is a JRPG? Well a JRPG is a game where you typically have turn based combat. Think of your Final Fantasies for example. In this series we'll be covering how to make the turn based system, how to do attacks, animations, spells, sound effects, saving, loading, items, inventory, leveling and so much more. If you want to follow along, we are using the Paragon assets for the characters and their animations. We also are using some other free assets available from the marketplace or have recently been available for free using the monthly uh, giveaways. However, to follow along, all you have to do is download the starter project files in the link below in the description. Simply just download that file, unzip it and you're good to go. Also, for patrons that are on gold tier or higher, you have access to the completed project files for this series. So you can download it straight away, follow along and see and play the game at its finished. So let's talk about episode 1. In episode 1, we'll be going through the basics of how the system works and setting up the combat component to allow us to do turn-based combat. Let's get started with episode 1. So to get started with the JRPG battle system, I want to first of all spend some time going over how the system works and why it works the way it does. So the whole premise of the whole uh, game is that your characters are in, taking in turns who's going to be attacking next. And their turn is dictated by their speed of their character or their haste. So basically they go into like a queue based system. And on that queue based system they're going to call a request to say hey I'm ready to uh, fight, put me onto the queue. And then as the uh, previous turn has ended, it will check that queue and then initiate the turn of that character. So we're going to first of all set up the foundations of our JRPG battle system um, in this episode. So we're just going to go over and create a few things here. So part of the pack here I've included uh, some Paragon characters. We've got Paragon Fey, Gideon and Greystone. And I've also got the enemies from the Infinity Blade series as well as this, uh, the Brass uh, City, I think it's called, uh, which is a free map you can get from the Marketplace. I've also got a some a one visual effects pack in here, which is visual effect pack 13. It was free one month, uh, but you can use any particle system you want. You can even use the ones that come with Paragon characters if you wish. It's totally up to you what uh, visual effects you use in this series. And finally, I've got some UI folder here where I've Import it in some font I want to use here. Again, you can use the, the default font or any font you wish. So, to get started here, we're going to create some base foundation components to this. So, the first we're going to need are the game mode. So, we're going to need a new game mode base, and we'll call this one uh, Battle Game Mode. As well as the game mode, we're going to need another controller. Let me go to Player Controller. And this one will be battle player controller. And then finally, we're going to have the main uh, meat of the whole entire system, which is an actor component. And this actor component is going to be handling the turning of each character, the turn of each character, sorry. So we're going to go to actor component and we're going to call this one the combat component. And as I said, that's where we set up the, how the turns work, what the different commands do, and the various spells each character has as well. So let's set up the functions that we need for this. So I'm going to go into my uh, game mode first of all. And on my game mode, I need to set up the player controller to be used. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Um, and the player controller is set over here on the right hand side. Player controller. And we're going to choose the battle player controller. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to make some custom events in here. So the game mode is what's taking control of the situation and determining whose turn is next. So first of all, we need to have a couple of custom events. So the first one is going to be called a turn request. This is the function that gets called by each player uh, character or enemy character requesting that they want their turn. So that comes through here. And it's going to requ uh, require a unit for it to come through. Now the unit is going to be the character or enemy. So let's make the character enemy class. Uh, parent class anyway for it. Go to blueprint base. Choose character. And this is going to be called unit base. 
and off of that we're going to have actually two more uh, children we're going to right click on this create child blueprint this would be party unit base so you know who are your friendly units and again another child of unit base or the enemy unit base again makes it a lot easier for us to decide, determine who is who so let's go back into our game mode here and on the term request we're going to have one input and that input is going to be the unit that we're adding to this so be unit base object reference and it's unit base because it, this will be used for both enemies and players so we're going to name this one unit and we're going to make this an array so I'm going to go to the variables and add a new variable I'm going to call this one turn order the variable type of which is going to be unit base object reference and it will be an array this is the list of the terms that are uh, queued up I'm going to drag this out to get and then I'm going to use add unique and we're using add unique because we don't want to have duplicates inside our list here we only want each player to appear once so we'll put in there like so and next we're going to make another custom event called start turn and this initiates whose turn it is and what they're going to do and this is called after the turn request has been triggered so we come out of here and do turn request uh, not turn request, sorry, start turn. And it's here because when the first character will uh, request their turn, you want them to start the turn. So it's going to start everything off from that point of view. Okay, on the start turn here, um, we're going to go through the following. So our job here is to get the combat component of our units and tell them to start their attacks. So first of all, we need to add those combat components to our units. I'm going to go to unit base and we're going to add component and we're going to search for our combat component. Compile and save that. I'm then going to go into my combat component and set up the various functions that I need here for this to work. So as I said, this is going to be handling the turn uh, commands for each character or each enemy. And so the very first thing it's going to do here is uh, get a reference to the character that they are on so to get the character that this component belongs to you use the get owner node and from there we're going to cast to unit base and plug that in to begin play and then we want this as a reference for later use so we're going to promote this to a variable and we'll call this one unit character and the very first thing we want to do here is actually store their first battle position. This is useful because we want them to be able to go back uh, to their starting point. If they go out uh, to attack or go out to, to cast a spell, you want them to always return back onto their spot. So we're going to take from here, get actor transform, and I'm going to promote that to a variable and call that one battle position. okay so this component here is going to have a variety of functions so the first function we're going to add in here is we're going to start unit turn and start unit turn is going to be the starting turn for the character and that's going to go off and do their thing we're then going to have also an end turn which is how it determines what it does at the end of its turn we're going to have another one called, um, sorry, I renamed that one to end unit turn. A bit different. Okay. Um, another one is going to be called uh, begin battle. And the begin battle's point is to basically start the requesting of the turn off. So at the very start of the game, it's going to call begin battle and it's going to start uh, the countdown for its uh, haste and the, the timer bar for the action to be taking place. That's going to basically kick everything off. Um, and that'll do for now. Okay. Uh, what we also do need to have on here, though, is an event dispatcher. Because we need to know a way to tell our game mode that we've ended our turn. And an event dispatcher is one way we can do that. So we go to event dispatcher and do turn ended. So why not just make it call the game mode's function to do the same thing? 
Well, when it goes to turn ended, there's a variety of things that are going to happen, not just the next turn. It's going to be doing other things too. And if using an event dispatcher, it makes it a lot easier because you don't know who is going to be listening out for that turn to end. So for now, we just want to use an event dispatcher. Okay, so we've got that there. Gonna hit compile and save that. Then we go back to my game mode and go to start turn. And on start turn, we'll put in this code. So we're gonna do a do once. And the do once point of view, uh, point is that it's only gonna do the start turn once. Uh, and it will let them finish their turn and before it calls start turn again. So nothing can call it again and nothing can trigger another turn so don't get two characters doing it at the same time. Uh, next we're going to get uh, to see if we've actually got anyone in our turn order. We're going to get turn order and we're going to check is valid index. We're just checking for index zero. Uh, that means the first item in the list basically is the, is the list empty. Um, and we can put that into a branch. So if the list is not empty, we want to tell it to start its turn. So we're going to take the turn order out and do get a copy. And then from there, I want to get the combat component. Okay. Yeah, like so. And the combat component is going to call the start unit turn function. So you're going to tell that unit, hey, start your turn. Do your thing. Um, we also want them bind the event uh, for its turn ending. We're going to take out from here again, uh, no, from the component and do bind event turn ended. Plug that in, there you go. And we'll bind this in a second to another event in a second. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to remove the index. So once it's added, the uh, told the unit to start the turn, we want to remove them from the turn order list. So I'm just gonna take turn order, set it to remove index, and you're gonna leave it at zero. So it moves the first one in the queue. Okay, so uh, next we've got the force branch here. And let's just move this along. We've got the force branch, and this force branch is going to basically tell it to ready the next turn in our uh, turn list here. Basically, if it, there's nothing in here, it's just going to run it again and keep checking basically that it's anyone's turn. So for that, we need to be able to reset our do once because the do once has locked it. So we're going to do a custom event here and call it ready next turn and ready next turn is going to first of all just reset the do once and we're going to call that on the false here ready next turn so if there's no one available it will just ready next turn go through here and reset the do once i then want it to call the start turn again so we want the ready next turn to actually do that so on ready next turn we're going to put a little branch in and the branch is basically, uh, sorry, not branch, we're going to put a sequence in. And put then zero into reset. And then one is going to go to a branch. And on here, we just want to check that the turn order has a valid index. So we're going here is valid index and plug that in there. So when it ready the next turn, it's just seeing if there's anyone left in the Q, if there is, great, that means we want to tell it to start turn. There you go. And that's it. That's what we have to do for this bit. So what will happen is, uh, let's say player, uh, player unit A requests a turn, they get added to the turn order and the start turn triggers. On the start turn, we go through here. This is now valid because we've got someone in there. And it's going to go through, tell them to start their turn, which will show up the UI make them do the attacks so on and so forth when their turn has ended we need to bind this to our ready next turn so let's take that and do create event and choose the ready next turn like so now call ready next turn uh, when it has ended and it's also removing it from the turn order when ready next turn is called it resets to do once allowing start turn to be fired again and then it goes down to check if there's someone else in the queue. If there's someone else in the queue, it's just going to go straight to starting that turn. If there's no one in the queue, it's going to do nothing. Basically, it just sets it up ready to go for the next person. And the next person that comes in will call the turn request, adding themselves to the queue, and start turn. 
And the reason why you have this bit down here is if, let's say, for example, so it, during someone's turn, someone else's turn is ready, you want to add them to the list again and again and again. Okay? But it won't happen again uh, whilst they're in that turn because this is still locked. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you don't, uh, watch it again. And if you still don't, just ask, leave a comment below and I'll try and explain it further. Okay, and we're going to hit compile and save on that. Okay, um, what else can we do? I think what we'll do now is we'll go to the um, setup for the uh, battle positions. So we're going to close this and we're going to create the blueprint class actor. And this will be the battle position. And this will be where your units are placed in the world your arena and part of the pack here that i've got is i've got this uh level that i've edited to make a little arena space for the fight to take place in but i've also got a level uh that hasn't got this and it has more of a level look layout uh, but obviously you can use any arena you want you can even use a the default template levels you can do whatever you want but the battle position we're going to go in there and we're going to set up their various uh things here so this is quite simple all it is is going to be a arrow component and that will go there. I'm just going to raise it up off, off the root a little bit. Okay. And we're going to have a variable on here. And we're going to check uh, if this is an enemy placement. So that way we make sure enemies on one side, players on the other. Enemy placement. And that will be instance editable. And now we also want to set this up to have a class as well so we're going to call this one unit class and the type for that is going to be a unit base and it'll be a unit base class reference again editable as well we're going to go to the construction script i'm just going to change the arrow color based on whether or not it's an enemy placement so we're going to drag the arrow component out set color see so set arrow color plug that in and then from the new color, we're going to drag out and do select color and plug in our is enemy placement. So if it's true, it's going to choose the A color. And if it's enemy placement, I'm going to make it red. Okay. If it's false, uh, meaning it's a friendly, I'm going to make it green. Hit compile, and this should now be green, like so. Excellent. Okay. So, um, Next, what we're going to do is we're going to do the spawn unit function. So at the very left here on the functions, we're going to do a new function called spawn unit. And this will be called at the start of the game, uh, start of the battle. So it spawns the correct units in the correct place. Uh, we're going to see that it's actually got a unit set to it. Because sometimes, for example, you may have um, uh, five positions for enemies, but only three are determined to spawn. That way you don't want to spawn an error instead. So we're going to do the get unit class reference for our variable. Right click and convert to validate get. And then if it's true, we're going to go to is valid and do spawn actor from class and plug in the unit class here. And the spawn transform is simply just the get actor transform of our battle position here. Uh, but we always want to make sure it spawns. So just when you've got this collision handling override, uh, change this from default to always uh, try to adjust location, but always spawn. Okay, quite important that we have that there. Okay, and that's spawn unit. And spawn unit is going to be played at the very start of the game. So on begin play, we'll do spawn unit. And it's good to have it as a function because then if you've got like a, a, um, a situation where you have an enemy that will call in additional enemies to join it, you can easily make them spawn in like this. And that brings us to the end of episode one. I'm going to put a pause there and finish off the combat component in the next episode. In episode two, we're going to finish that off and bring in our characters and enemies into the scene by making them spawn in ready for us to set up their combat. So join us on the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Daily, where a donation of just $1 a month gets you access to all my videos before anyone else. Massive thank you to all my supporters and subscribers for their continued support. 
make sure you hit that subscribe button and i'll see you all next time bye everyone